I'm doing this video about tribal and community responses for reform because I find it so fascinating at this particular time we're in, in our country's history, with all this polarization and all this need for reform. It's good just to kind of look back at an objective analysis of, of both of these types of approaches that are frequently used and to kind of help you form a better uh, decision about the approach you want to make for reform to happen in Chicago and across this country and this planet. So I hope you enjoy this. As we seek for more reform that's certainly needed in our country, there are often two different approaches that are used to create needed change. The tribal-oriented approach, and the other is the community-oriented approach. Tribes began as humans saw the need to band together to fight a common enemy either an animal predator that wanted them for their next meal or from another tribe that was attacking them to get their food to feed their own tribe. Tribes existed to fight the enemy. All animals are tribal in nature and it's again done to protect their species. Packs of wolves, schools of fish, a herd of horses are just a few examples. Communities, on the other hand, developed long after tribes, around the time when villages were starting to form and each member had a different role in the community to help them run well. Community members got together to help build a barn or respond to a natural disaster. The response of community to the Great Chicago Fire allowed us to come back stronger than ever and it allowed for high rises to get built. To survive, community members must get along with one another. Interestingly enough, we also see ants and bees form communities. Again, they are living in very complex systems and their survival depends on each of them playing out their own particular role. They must work well together in order for the whole community to survive. As I said earlier, tribes are assembled to fight a common enemy, and so they are often in an attack mode in order to fend off those who are out to harm them. Subduing the enemy is vital for their own survival. Now, members of a community focus on harmony because they must work well together. Avoiding conflict allows them to better negotiate with others and that's done for their survival. The common refrain from those in a tribe is, we demand, you must do this or there will be serious consequences. Community members will say, let's negotiate. Let's identify where we agree and then work out our differences. Let's work out those issues so that we can all work together. The rule of life for a tribe member is people should pay the price for the harm they've caused. That's because they're focused on defeating the enemy. The enemy will not change, so they must be defeated at all costs. Community members Hold steadfastly on the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Again, their focus is on living in harmony with others. Building relationships are important to both groups, but they have different reasons for focusing on them. Tribes build relationships with others who will join them in their fight to defeat the enemy. Communities build relationships with the other side for the purposes of helping them later negotiate with them. The tactics used by the tribe is the end justifies the means. So 
The use of shame is fair game. The whole goal is to defeat the enemy. Community members want to build consensus and they rely on compromises to reach their goals. Tribes are focused on defeating the enemy and as far as they are concerned, one never negotiates with them. For them, negotiations with people who can never be trusted are viewed as a sign of weakness. Community members, on the other hand, seek win-win solutions where both sides give in a little to forge an agreement that works for everyone. For them, entering negotiations is a sign of strength. I wanted to mention the notion of forgiveness because I came across this a number of times with all the readings I've done about polarization. Tribal members aren't so focused on forgiveness. That's because defeating the enemy is much more important to them. Some who operate under this framework will cancel people on social media once they are viewed as the enemy who must be defeated. Community members believe the use of forgiveness is essential to strengthening group dynamics, and that's needed for the community to work better together for their overall success. Almost all the readings I've come across have lifted up one approach while reaping harsh judgments against the other. So I think it's important to mention a positive attribute about both approaches. Members of a tribe are fearless in their pursuit of fighting for what they know is right. Community members have an openness to hear from others with different viewpoints, and that helps them to identify and address unintended consequences early on before a final decision is made. However, as with everything, there are always negative repercussions to either approach to creating change. Tribal members have a tendency to primarily listen only to their own group members, and that makes it difficult for them to identify unintended consequences. Community members focus on building a collaborative framework with many people, and that may serve to distract them from also addressing the needs of some of their individual members facing serious issues. It's also good to point out negative repercussions that affects their own internal group dynamics. Tribal members are often stuck in an attack mode, as is easy to see in social media, but that tendency spills into the way they also treat one another, and this puts their group survival at risk. When it comes to survival, tribes are much more fragile than communities. Community members develop a strong sense of loyalty with one another, but that can make it more difficult for them to confront a member who is acting inappropriately. Both tribes and communities have leaders, but they attract different types of leaders to assist them with their efforts. For tribes, they often have leaders who are populous, and authoritarians who speak openly about fighting the enemy. The enemy must be defeated. We often see this type of leader taking either far left or far right political stances. Voters tend to either have very strong positive or very strong negative reactions about this leader. For community members, their leaders are often more lenient and their beliefs, and they do that in order to engage in bridge building with everyone. They are more observed among centrists, and I have uh, found that those who are more community-minded are much more likely to attract voters from different political parties for their support.
in the end, it's important just to look at your own approach and which approach that you use, is it producing the results you want? And also, as with everything, it's important to look at both the positive and negative repercussions. You want to make sure the positive repercussions of the choices you make outweigh the negative ones. Uh, my other reason why I thought it was important to do this and do it in a way that was very objective is because I believe it's so important for all of us to understand the way other people think, including those people who think differently. It may help you in your response to them. And overall, for me, the, the ultimate goal, which will kind of give away about which approach I like best, the overall goal is to create more peace on our planet. Thank you.